Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I am so happy to say that the Titan X 12.5 right behind me is finally complete. Yes, we got this bow a little while back at Kayak City. Honestly, I had this sitting here bare bones for probably longer than I should have, but man, things just got busy between tournaments, fishing, random life stuff. I just never really had time to take two days and fully sit down and outfit this guy. You know, I was getting prepared though. I was ordering stuff on Amazon, getting stuff from Big Adventures, tons of random accessories, hardware parts, add-ons, wiring, all in anticipation for taking two days of time, just setting it aside and getting this build completely done. And just to be completely honest with you, I got a little bit of pressure to get this boat done, but for a good reason. About a month ago, I got a call from Native. They wanted to come out here again to shoot, to do some filming out of the 12.5X out on the California Delta. And we picked a few dates. So basically I gave myself a deadline to have this boat completely done, completely rigged out for that shoot. And guess what? It's the day before the shoot. Boat has been done. It's finished, ready to hit the water. And what's crazy is I've been fishing out of a kayak for 10 plus years. I've probably owned maybe 15 kayaks in those 10 years. You know, and I've done some rigging, some simple stuff, but you guys probably know, especially if you follow the channel for any length of time, that in the past five to six years, I don't rig my boat anymore. I've had it sent to the wizard. He's been outfitting all my boats for the past five, six years. And I wanted to take the easy way out and send him this boat, but I said, you know what? I think it's time that I learned to kind of put the pieces together myself. So yeah, I just took two days, had all the parts, everything ready and just bang this out. Got everything installed, the wiring, the graphs, the modifications, the motor, all the drilling. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of work, but you know what? I'm happy I did it. Though I've done some boat mods and boat builds in the past, nothing to this degree. So this was my first official complicated or complex boat build. And uh, I think it came out good. Now, all that being said, there was pretty much a blueprint sitting uh, right here that I could copy. So I don't want you guys to think that I've, you know, come up with these innovative ideas or custom mods. That's just not how it is. A lot of other people, involved in the past that have done riggings that I've taken those ideas from. So the credit is due to them, not myself. I simply just copied and just did the work, but proud of it. I think it came out pretty good, pretty clean for my first official complex boat build. And uh, now that it is the night before our filming dates, figured I would show you guys exactly what I did to this particular kayak, the modifications, the parts, the fun things, the not so fun things, some of the issues I ran into, though there were not many, and uh, give you just a complete tour of the Titan X 12.5. So chest cam on got a couple of different angles to show you guys this complete setup and let's just start at the front so yes i mentioned she is registered and again titan 12.5x versus the 10.5x this is the one i've been rocking all of 2024 it has been fantastic and as mentioned in the previous videos i won't go into too much detail but i thought it would be a good idea to get the bigger size version a little bit more stable a little bit more real estate and just see how i liked it compared to the small one and take each boat out to different bodies of water different weather accordingly so yeah a lot bigger platform i don't know how easy it is to see from this angle or any angle but this boat though it is two foot longer and a little bit wider it just seems way bigger like when you see them side to side it is a noticeable difference and actually when we're at kayak city had to pick up a boondocks bed extender because this guy will definitely not fit just out of the tailgate of the truck we need a little extension for more support but let's get right into it in the front much longer nose of the kayak i think that's where this boat really lengthens you got a lot more storage in the front hatch and just to pop this guy open this is where we're doing a lot of our electronics, a lot of our wiring. So right here, we've got a Bio Eno 12 volt, 30 amp hour battery. Kind of small for this hatch, probably could go bigger, but I think this will be fine for what we're running electronics wise. Now, this looks like a mess and I probably could have done a better job cleaning up the wiring. But a lot of this you'll notice is so that I can take a lot of the big accessories, you know, the expensive items such as the hummingbirds, the motor, and pretty much set them on each boat easily and not have to change a bunch of stuff such as the wiring so all i really had to order was extra wiring for the hummingbird graphs and this guy right here is on the captain's bridge which just pops out like so you take this off and put it on the other boat but it goes in just like that nice and easy and everything is right here and then if we come to the other side We've got the Mega 360 as well. So not only are we transitioning the graphs from boat to boat, but we can transition the Mega 360 as well. And what's cool about this is all we had to do was, of course, we got the wiring to connect as one and two. So two connections there. This guy right here, all we had to do was buy the Railblazer 
base plate or mount, put it right on the gear track, no drilling required. And this guy, after I undo these two wires right here, can go from boat to boat. So a really nice way to utilize the 360 on both kayaks, which was something I definitely wanted, especially for this bigger platform. And all you gotta do is line these tabs up here. This will drop right in. And just turn them at a quarter inch or so. She's locked in place. And if you guys aren't familiar how this works, this is kind of like the locking mechanism. Pull this up. This slides out. You can drop the 360 down. I just bring it in a hair, get it nice and tight to the boat, then push that tab down. And it's locked in place. You got Mega 360 to bring it back up, pull the tab up, swing her up, slide her back in, get her lined up with the roto grip. Click her back down, she's locked, and your 360's sitting there tucked away. So going back up to the front with the electronics, this is definitely something I had to do a little YouTubing as far as wiring, such as the harnesses, wire splicing, crimping, all that stuff. And actually throughout this process, I acquired a nice little tool collection between drill bits, wire crimping stuff, terminal kits, Anderson plugs, a jigsaw, then of course a torch, stuff like that for the wiring and a lot of the electrical stuff, but it's really not that hard once you just know what you're doing. And uh, basically what we have here is a plug and play system. So I decked this out basically just how the other one is with nav lights and interior lights. So I've got two connectors right here. This first one has the wire harness, which has all of our wiring to the two graphs and the 360. So just connector right here. And then the other one will be to all of our lights. So I do have navigation lights and interior lights, and then you just connect it like that. So your wiring is all connected, simple as that. And just to show you, this little bucket right here, I've got excess wiring. Also have a pump in there just in case, always a good idea to have a pump. And then I have my dry bag as well as emergency medical kit. Just has extra tools and whatnot. So you drop that back in, and right here I'll drop this back down. You can see that we put our navigation lights, our red and green lights, just on the hatch, just like how they are on the other boat. And here's our switch panel right here. You can see that right here, this little rocker panel. So navigation lights are switch one, interior lights are switch two. Pretty simple. I didn't use switch three, but if I want to, there's an option for that. Pretty cool lighting system, nice and simple. And another thing you guys will notice throughout the boat are these guys right here, the power links. They're situated throughout the entire boat in key locations where you could be drilling through the boat. But the nice thing is these power links right here allow you to drill through the power link itself. And if you don't like the drill job or you want to change something or you want to delete something, you just change the power link because these come right out. You swap it for a brand new one and boom, you're done. So I think I only had to drill in this boat for the interior lights and everything else was through the power links. That's really nice. You don't want to be putting holes in plastic if you don't have to. So just a really nice feature about this particular kayak. And I think one of the things that goes overlooked, especially nowadays, is just how well these are put together. I mean, Native has been making kayaks for a long time now. They take a lot of customer feedback, pro staff support, and they really try to utilize that information and make the perfect boat. And you can just tell when you look at this thing, how well thought out this boat is. I mean, as far as like the power links to the drainage system, I mean, look at the drainage system, gear tracks lining the whole deal. You got rod tubes inside if you want them. You got tackle box storage on the sides, the underseat tray system, and then the storage, which we'll continue to talk about in the front and the back is very kayak electronic friendly as far as batteries go, because obviously now with graphs, the motors, whatever you guys may use that requires battery power, these particular boats are set up perfectly to store big batteries inside the kayak give it a better weight distribution versus having them just sitting on the back or something like that my point being is these boats are just very well thought out and you know for me personally someone who's rigging a pretty complicated rig for the first time by myself it's very user friendly so i think that's cool moving on did the electronics we've got our graphs so and i might as well turn the graphs on now that everything is uh, plugged in so hummingbirds are on let's go to the motor we'll just keep going along with the electronics so we've got the new port still installed on these kayaks the nk300 is what we're going to be rocking for this particular boat i've heard i can't confirm yet because i haven't been on the water with a motor on this but i heard that this actually moves a lot faster maybe one mile an hour up to six and a half or so compared to the 10.5 which makes sense it's a longer boat even though it's heavier it should cut through the 
the water better. I'll be interested to see if this actually goes faster because I will have a decision to make. Once these are both done, I've fished out of both of them. I'm gonna have to kind of pick which ones I wanna bring to the tournaments or really just for a day of fun fishing. It might be a tough choice because I've really enjoyed the 10.5. Gotta have the Yak Attack double header. This is where we store our paddle, which is nice. But yeah, the motor situation, we got the Newport right here. We've got this wiring completely concealed within the boat. So again, just a little through hole Yak Attack piece right here. We put the wire through there. It's running inside the boat and it actually comes out back here to another power link, which has the throttle control and then the power. So go into the power real quick and talking about the battery storage compartments that are specific to them. We've got the interior hatch here, the rear hatch. If I just take this guy off here, I've got a 36, 30 amp hour battery. Gonna only use one, but the plan is to put two in series next to each other. You do have to remove the bucket. This bucket removes, and then you can take these guys, turn them and set two and two side by side. But you can see right here, these Anderson clips, I've got these connected all the way to the motor, which connects to the power or the battery. And all you do is just plug them in right here. So that power that we just connected, all you do is you plug this guy right here. There's your power. You've got your throttle control. You're plugged in. She knows we're on, so I better turn that off somehow. Oh, dang it. Let's turn that off. All right, now she'll be quiet. So that is the motor situation. Same way we have it rigged up to deploy and stow the motor. So we've just got a little pulley system right here. We've got these little Yak Attack eyelets going on the gear tracks. Rope comes all the way up here. In the seated position, gives you a nice little mechanical advantage. You just pull the handle, motor pops up, and we've got a locking cleat right here. So locking cleat locks that motor in the upright position. And just FYI for you guys, I will link as much, if not all, of the parts, the accessories of this build in the description below so that if you guys have a Titan or really any kayak, you can copy these modifications. Again, they weren't hard, you just need to find the right parts and that's like 90% of the battle. So everything in this build will be linked in the description. And uh, yeah, that is the motor, how we take it off the cleat, let her drop. She's in the water. While we're here, let's just talk about the seat. So I like the seat that I put on the Titan X 10.5. Now at the time, that was one of the first, I think it may have been the first one made. And they had the seat on there that they could get at the time. The one that they're using now, which is actually the one that comes with the boat is smaller. So the ones they had initially just to basically get a seat in a pinch is a little bit too big for my liking. The back's a little bit too big. It might work for some people, but I am used to a little bit smaller seats. So we ended up getting a Pelican seat, a 360 Erg seat and putting it on the 10.5 and it's really comfortable. I like the seat a lot and I got used to it so I figured that I'd get the same seat for this kayak so got another seat. Did the modification to put it on the base frame that it comes with. One thing that I did to both was switch the straps to NRS straps. I just got some NRS straps from 12 footers. Cut them down and added those straps in replacement of the stock straps. Not a fan of the stock straps on these seats. They tend to slip throughout the day but can't go wrong with NRS straps so put those guys on and added a swivel mechanism. Now, the whole point of the swivel seat for this boat especially is so that you can swivel and mainly access this huge area back here. I mean, for some people, they're gonna have their stuff back here from a black pack to a cooler to really whatever. And you wanna be able to swivel this seat. So this is actually really easy to do. You just pull this out and it'll lock in different positions. It's not free swinging, it locks and I think maybe 15 degree angles. You know, I like having this as an option just in case, but to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna actually use that 360 mechanism and only because I've situated my tackle trunk, that guy right there, which has of course all my tackle and then all my rods directly behind this bar, the sidekick wheels, and sits right there so that I can just reach back and grab stuff, which is exactly what I do right here for the 10.5. You can see it's set up exactly the same. You got the seat, the bar, and the tackle trunk goes right here. Now, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll probably keep this space open so that they can access this hatch and then they'll put their trunk back here. Well, that just added another foot where you have to reach. So yeah, the swivel would make a ton of sense 
sense in that situation, but I like having things at the ready, just an arm's reach away. So what I did, and definitely not the finest part of the build for me, but I just took some uh, styrofoam and cut it like a little puzzle and made a platform, used way too much electrical tape, took I think the local Ace Hardware's full supply of electrical tape and <laughs> wrapped it all, super glued it, bungeed her down and made a platform for the back. But hey, you know what? Styrofoam's good. It floats, it's lightweight and uh, makes a perfect little uh, customizable platform that is fitted to keep level with this hatch and my tackle trunk will just sit right on there. I've got the bungees to secure it down just like how I have in the other boat. This will attach to one of the hooks on the tackle trunk. Everything is secure and it's right behind me. So that's the explanation for this uh, electrical tape madness. And then coming here, we've got a little tool caddy. This has all the essential items that you may or may not need throughout the day, such as pliers, got a little multi-tool, sunscreen, 316's Allen wrench, which actually goes to the Burley Pro handle. So I guess this is a perfect moment to talk about the handle. We already did these modifications at Kayak City. Actually, when I got the boat, that's the first thing. And the only thing I did at Kayak City was install the Burley Pro stuff. And one of them was the handle. And uh, the only thing I added to the handle was a little Gomexis knob, just to give myself a little bit more height on the handle and just makes it a little bit more comfortable to move. But this little, bolt right here. You can actually loosen and tighten this guy. and It'll make the handle more free swinging or tighter. The reason I do that or have this at the ready is because the temperatures, especially out here in California, this time of year change so drastically. So depending on how cold or hot it is, this might move a little bit differently and you will have to adjust this. You can also really just crank this bolt down if you wanted to. And then this is basically stuck. So it's nice to have this tool right here. So that's why I have that. Moving along sidekick wheels, the wheel system for this kayak. So I will have the wheels with me. Something I'm gonna touch on briefly, but still important and something I really enjoy about these kayaks is the steering system with the feet or the foot controlled steering system. So right here, got the locking mechanism. This is a little bit different than what we have on the other one, but basically these foot pegs are connected to wires. And FYI, these boats do have mounting bolts already in place to these exact locations for a steering system to be installed. And um, yeah, is that it? Did I really cover all that that fast? Well, it wasn't that fast, but it seemed like it was a lot faster than normal. Oh, the other thing too, just have to mention it, transducer underneath the boat. These come with pre-drilled screws or holes that you can actually use to mount your transducer and put it in that recessed area to keep it from protruding from underneath the boat and then potentially having it rip off or hit things. And then of course in the front added a keel guard. Unfortunately my heat gun took a crap midway through the process so I had to use a hair dryer and uh, came out okay. I think it'll work for now. Yeah I think that is pretty much it. Again a lot of the accessories just go from boat to boat. I keep them on this table Table or underneath the table. Things like the propel drive, rear camera mount, the wheels, the net, and the paddle. It's really not much. The only other things that you'd normally see here would be the motor and the graphs. And then I know that I need to take all that stuff, put it in the truck, load the kayak, and I'm ready to go fishing. You know, over the years, kayak fishing has been so advanced technologically, electronics wise, size wise, they've definitely gotten bigger, gotten more stable, a lot more complicated. And I know that there's going to be folks out there who love that, who take full advantage of that, and then and there's other guys that may not like that so much and they like to keep things a little bit more simple. And I see both points. I'm definitely one that likes to have these fully rigged out kayaks with everything on them, all the bells and the whistles, but you'll notice right over there too, I've still got my Slayer Max 10 and my Falcon because I do still like taking the smaller craft, minimal tackle, minimal stuff and going out and fishing. But my point being is even with all these advancements, the kayaks getting bigger and whatnot, I think the biggest key for me at least is making sure that it's still easy to outfit to get on the water and to fish out of. I mean, the whole point of fishing and kayak fishing or really any fishing is being efficient on the water, maximizing your time, making it comfortable, making it enjoyable. And whether you like doing it from a $100,000 bass boat, a $10,000 kayak, a $500 kayak, the bank, a float tube, an inner tube, a canoe, anything you can think of, as long as you're enjoying fishing and you're not like stressed out about your stuff or how you're doing it, then that's totally fine. I think that's the whole purpose of fishing, right? You just wanna enjoy your time 
on the water and doing it in something that is easy, is fun, and is convenient. So guys, that is going to do it for the uh, the rigging or the tour of how I set this up. It is almost seven o'clock and I've got to get a few things ready because like I said, tomorrow, really early, we are going to head to the Delta. I'm actually picking up our camera guy, Pat, never met him before, but talked to him on the phone. Seems like a really cool dude. Seen some of his work. It's pretty insane in a good way. We're going to be heading to the Delta, trying to beat that sunrise to get the shots. We're going to spend a full day out on the water filming out of this kayak, hopefully catching some Delta bass. And we do have a camera boat who I hear is one of the best guides on the Delta, one of the legends of the Delta for sure. I called him up and he was totally down to uh, be the camera boat guy, even guide us a little bit, maybe put us on some fish. I won't tell you who he is right now, but uh, you'll, you'll see tomorrow who I'm talking about. And I think uh, you guys will be okay with it. But guys, that is a tour. As I mentioned, everything for this build that I put on, installed, I'll link in the description so that if you guys want to try to copy it or use some of the same parts, you can. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. I will make a point to try to answer all your questions. I'm going to start rigging up tackle, get some Delta baits ready, and uh, probably go to bed soon because we got an early one tomorrow. It should be fun. Weather's looking nice. I hope the fish are biting, and I will see you guys tomorrow morning for our shoot out on the California Delta. We're at the launch, vlog style today, apparently. Alrighty, here we go. Is that him? Is that him? Is that our guide? Hey! <laughs> hey what's man, up, what's up? I'm in pet, Obedi. Hey, what's going on, bro? Hey. Good to meet you, man. Yeah, man. Hey, I'm in right. vlog mode right now. <laughs> pet, our camera guy just flew in from Florida. Yeah. Sack, drove down to Brentwood, picked him up early this morning, uh, getting set up, getting some shots. Yeah, there you go. Doing crazy stuff with the camera. <laughs> well, early mornings. And our guide. I'd let it uh, be a little bit of a mystery, but uh, <laughs> our guide slash uh, camera boat dude. Look at that. And uh, I know the folks will be a little uh, disappointed, but it is what it is. No uh, root beer, but, <laughs> but I, I, think, that's it. I think that'll do. Yeah, this, this will work, you know, until root beer returns. She's still in the hospital? Yeah, she's still in the hospital. Oh, you man. know, got her feet kicked up. It's one of those hospital resorts slash resorts, you know, so she's not really complaining right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, guys, I don't want to take up too much of Pat's time. We got the sun just about to come up. We got to get some shots and get to work. So stay tuned and get on the water, do some fishing. We're ready to film, though. Boat set up on the dolly. Holy smokes, that's big. I keep like thinking, wait, the 10.5 got bigger, and it did. It's just the 12.5. It's a lot bigger. I'm excited to try it out. All right, see you in a bit. Throw this in the front hatch. Maybe, maybe like just sit like right in the middle of the ramp here. Okay. Steering. It's like cross my fingers, all this stuff works. Yeah, right. Everything works on the boat, so that's good. Yeah, it, right. <laughs> it floats, motor works. Well, what's the name? Uh, trolling motor cable broke over. Uh oh. Uh, I can still get it up there. <laughs> Bust out another thousand for a boat. Yeah, that's why. Well, it's like bust out another 500 for the kayak. Yeah, right <laughs> yeah, actually, it's way more stable than the other one. That's nice. There's a fish right there. Once we get out of here, it'll get a lot cleaner, so it won't be like muddy water. Oh, we get bit on the frog. Yeah, the frog That'd be killer. Bite. Just to. Get 
dude. <laughs> They're here. They're fickle sometimes. Very tide dependent out here. Is like, it, is that, is that, is that usually, out? yeah. Those tide windows are really key for their feed windows. But this time of year during the spawn, I mean, we should be able to get up shallow and see them. And we'll see though. We got a couple of launches. Huh? I said, we'll see. We got a couple of launches if we need it. Oh yeah, for sure. You got a big day here. Yep. Got to catch two fish. Got to catch two fish. <laughs> That's it. I probably got like three spots this way that we could check. All right. Maybe not suitable for GB show. We might get sneak in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> we might got to touch some tournament water. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know the deal. You let me know what needs to be oh, at. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all good. Damn. This kayak's a beast. It's, it's almost as long as your boat. I know. <laughs> Pat, you call the shots. You want me to do anything specific? I think we're starting around here. Yeah, so we can go up in here real fast. Yeah. And then we'll go into the next one. Stuff. Yeah. Should I just go for the money shot and get a frog fish right here? Yeah, you go. It looks good. I'm gonna throw a frog in there just real quick, just in case. Heck yeah, now you gotta keep that frog lit. Yep. Got the duckweed and the shade. See, I remember how to fish a frog. I don't think I had a frog bite in like I don't even know how long. Seen them on this bank spawning before. Only one year though, and it was for like a two day little period. Ooh. Let's just see here. Man, the duckweed, I want to throw that frog. I just don't know if it's going to be productive. Right. I'll just get a couple in the box hopefully yeah. early yeah, on. Calm down, relax a little bit. <laughs> That's not the giant we're looking for, but it's a good sign. <laughs> Just uh, getting a feeler with the old Senko. Yeah. Can't never go wrong with Senko. <laughs> this time of year, for sure. There we go. That's a good one. Got a good one. Yeah. Yep, not a giant, but... Man, you're such a good guy, though. Oh, you know, I know what I can do, baby. <laughs> We're going to catch them today, man. They're going to be biting. Yeah, they're going to be biting. Might be senko -y, but whatever. Whatever, man. Yeah, box them. Sure. Going for a ride, buddy. Don't you worry, we'll let you go at the end. You know who you with. He's safer with us instead of the exactly. sea lion. Oh, yeah. Good starter fish. Let's get another one. Yep. Right there. Good fish right there. Oh my god. Big ones. What were they doing? Oh. cruising around here. Man, oh man. Good one sitting right there. Look, you can see the bigger ones are sitting right on the brakes. You want a bed? No, you're not. That's the problem. They're not even on bed. They're just sitting there. Fish are being funky. The big ones are. Well, they're all actually being funky. The heck? Not as cooperative as I was hoping they'd be today. This spot. I've never real. seen this spot. If they're gonna bite a frog, it should be now. But we pay all the big bucks. All right, folks, I'm just gonna keep this real. We got a frog fish, but I'm not allowed to show you where. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 
get on? Oh, yeah, sure, might as well. Oh, really? Uh, oh. <laughs> Look at that. Is oh. a new one? Just like lift the kayak on the back of your boat and right. <laughs> go full speed. Pull it up on the boat and drive it. Oh, nice. Man, that's a big kayak. <laughs> How is it so far? It's, it's good. Really good. Yeah, I was like, one of the things I was just a little apprehensive about today was just getting used to the boat. It's a totally new boat, so yeah. I'm like, well, it's going to be all awkward and like just, you know, a new boat, but it's not. It feels good. It feels nice. really the same as the other one, really? just more stable, yeah. should probably get a trailer for it, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like driving through the bay and then up through the mountains. Like, I don't want to have a trailer. Yeah. I'd rather just have that portable one and yeah. then you're, you get the luxury of launching it with the trailer, just not on the highway and stuff. Yeah, it's nice that way. <laughs> so far, what is it, one o'clock? What do we think? Man, this one of those uh, gorditas, one of those deli shrimp, one of those muffin toppers, one of those pounders. Yeah. We yeah. got fish, so I'm not complaining. All right. You know, um, nice day. Nice day. Nice, beautiful day. Tide is out. Let's see if we can go punch some fish right now. And, uh, you know, keep the party going. Pat, what do you think so far on so the shoot? Far, so good, man. Yeah? It's looking good. Going yeah. to plan. Yeah. Nothing uh, crazy? No curveballs? No, no. We're doing good. That's, <laughs> that's odd. Right? Yeah, that's weird for us. There's right. always usually some uh, always shenanigans. Some, always some shenanigans. But <laughs> the day's still young. We can... Uh, <laughs> We can change that quick. <laughs> All right, well, on to the next spot. Figured I'd hop in the boat, tow the kayak so we can go a little faster, save some battery. And uh, yeah, as O said, try to go punch a big one. What do we got, like 10 pounds? 11. Oh, really? Better than zero. Yeah, exactly. Because you never know. Could have been. Yeah, we didn't have some of them days, GP. <laughs> oh, I know. We did everything we could do. All right. Starting right here, start working our way back. Alrighty, back to work. Back to work. Let's set this little camera thing up real quick. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I'll grab a rod. Like the shadow is a little bit on that. So face this bank? Yeah. And just kind of keep it maybe like fishing up just at that way a little bit more. Like okay. So yeah, my only thing is I might need you guys to go. If we go this way, it would be kind of far out. Of the okay. Hold it. Okay. Go ahead and check it again, just in case. Never seen that done before. That's kind of cool. <laughs> that angle, that camera. Yeah, that is. It's got all the tricks. I've never yeah, seen. That's, awesome. yeah, man. <laughs> that's really cool. That's cool, too. cool. Good. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Oh, where do you want me to go? Um, you want me to do the other side, or do you want me? Yep. Yep. You just take the side. Hey, hey! There we go. All right, Obie Williams, one of the best guys on the Delta. He knows where to go and what to do and when to do it. That's maybe one of the bigger ones today. Yeah, three. Guide comes through again. Man, do, yeah. do we have to tip you today? Huh? Do we have to tip you? Uh, yeah, I just tip you hat. I might buy you, I might buy you dinner. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, a little meat. Yeah. There we go. Nice one. And that's the good news is I'm sure there's more where that comes from. Oh, that's what I'm saying. We're going to catch a big one. Yeah, that low tide. That's the yep. only one way to do it right yep. now. Oh! 
good one. I think so. Ounce and a half weight. Got to get the big weight to get through this stuff, especially on that low tide. Got one. There's one of the ones. There's the one right there. No! No! Yeah. How big you think? Uh, over five for sure. Four. For sure. Big. Maybe ah. all I can do is bring it to the big fish, man. I can't catch them for I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I had her right here turn and she just, I think I lost a little tension and she just popped off. Yeah. Ah, almost a perfect day. be live well worthy yeah second pass through here another bite Damn. punch bites on thank you obity oh i don't even know that's gonna call anything I don't even know if that's gonna call. I don't think so. Yeah, I would say not, but man, fun, fun fish. Be the one, be the one. Yeah, here we go. Thank you, sir. Man, not a giant, but gonna help our cause all right man me and O are working on a well O's working on a bag I kind of contributing little upgrade little upgrade yeah, my God. Ooh. Oh, yeah. man we got a decent bag going <laughs> man oh man son of a gun dude we never even have 20 when me and you're fishing out of your boat I know. that's what I'm saying it's the best day we've ever had that's how we got to do it from now on I'll just sit in my kayak next to your boat <laughs> Cheers guys, that was a long day. Cheers, that was a long day. That was a good day. That was a good day. It was a beautiful yeah. day, wonderful day. But uh, she's over, what can we say? Man, best five, went over 21 pounds. They all were solid yeah. fish. And it was nice to start off with, you know, nothing nothing fancy, but we was catching fish to keep the momentum going. And as the day went on, fish started getting bigger. Hey, that's true. Pat, I mean, this was a job, this was your work. Filming, getting this shot, the shoot. Honestly, what would you rate this uh, session? I mean, I know there's a lot of factors that go into these things, weather, the bite, even like silly things like the lighting, the boats to work, the kayaks to work, all those factors considered. And all those factors considered, I think we had a pretty exceptional day. I mean, I'd definitely give it nine, nine and a half. Nine and a half out of ten. I mean, because we got everything we could ever want. And you've what, been, what more could you've you been doing do? this for ten years, you said? Yeah, professionally for ten so, years. So, I mean, yeah. you probably have your good days, your bad days. Oh, yeah. Everything sure. in between. Yeah. So this, yeah, this was definitely better. one of the better ones, for sure. It made it easy. <laughs> made my job easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we were there saying, we with us, yeah. I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, with us. Well, if we had group here, then it may have changed. Yeah, we probably caught more bigger fish.
days, but we probably would have broke down it's somewhere a, it's out a there. <laughs> yeah, it's a trade-off. Yeah, it's a trade-off. <laughs> Delta can be so fickle. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I think it kind of was today, because we were seeing a lot of fish shallow, like in weird spots, and yeah, they just were acting yeah. kind of funky. The bigger fish. The bigger fish. They were on the move. No bad fish. Surprisingly. Yeah, but, you know, crawfish. 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 Is that always a bonus, a top water oh, crawfish? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, got, you, got, you got the eat? Oh yeah. Ooh. I can't wait to see it. That's going to be that's gonna be a good one right there. That's we put good. some work in today, fellas. I don't know when it'll go live or when your edits will go live. Probably be a minute or two, just because yeah. it'll take some time. Time, but I'll definitely make sure that you guys uh, know where to find that because I'm excited to see. I mean, I think the stuff you were bringing out today, the Gosh. underwater lens, the stick lens, the telescope lens, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't even know. I felt like I was on a set like with Tom Cruise doing a Mission <laughs> Impossible. Or I was yeah. like, you know, I'm ready for my close up. Is it the VL? Every time I look over, you pull out a different camera. I know. I'm like, how, how many? The bag was even that big. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing, too, you gotta say this just because this was how we started the video the Titan 12.5X, it performed. It did. Uh, I didn't really know exactly how it would perform after rigging it, building it myself. I mean, granted, again, I had a blueprint. Yeah, great. Motor. Thank you. It looks real nice. Thank you. Real it, professional. Appreciate it. I tried my best. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it was a fun build and it performed. I can say that compared to the 10.5, definitely more stable. It's faster and it definitely tracks better, which you'd expect from a bigger boat, but very similar. Very similar in many ways too. I don't know. After using both, I'm going to have to, I don't know which one I'm going to favor. Oh, also, thank you for <laughs> catching the bigger fish today. I mean, I oh, caught fish, but oh, we caught the big ones. So we had good fish for the shoot. So. Look at you. You guys know that. <laughs> guide service hot notch. If you guys are looking for a guide, I'd, I'd highly recommend Come holler at your boy, man. You need a laugh and a dupe. Do. Do. You know, holler at your boy one time. Day in my book was a success. Very yeah. successful. Yeah. Right. Thank you guys. It was oh, yeah. fun. It Good was time. Fun. Maybe another day sometime. Oh, yeah. We got to run this back. Yeah. Have right. to. Cheers. 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 <laughs>